Hello, Velomobile fans. After a couple of uh, uncomfortably close interactions with cars on my way to uh, on my commute the other day, I have decided it's time to install the hotspot in the uh, new bulk. In the Quest, I had a couple of Wayland flashers, a clear one in the front and a red one in the back, and uh, I haven't ever had any uncomfortably close interactions with cars running those, so for now I'm just going to attribute it to the fact that I don't have super bright lights yet on the book. It just has uh, the Cl Kellerman running lights in the, in the uh, DF Addo that are flashing and they're not that bright. So uh, I did a little research and I did a little shopping on Amazon and I picked up a Phoenix T3 fiercely bright red. It's part number D50015 perimeter mount. So I have temporarily wired it up to a 12 volt battery source and let's see how that light looks. It has, uh, by the way, I think 15 flashing modes or something and for now this is the one I'm using. It is um, definitely fiercely bright. It will uh, have no problem getting the attention of a driver that's looking anywhere <laughs> towards the tail of the uh, bulk. I want to emphasize that the intention is to not run those flashers at night. I'm going to have them wired up on a separate switch. I have some switches left over and there's plenty of room in the uh, switch panel in the bulk to add another switch. But I have these nice little lighted toggle switches and I will use that to wire this up. The other thing I have purchased is these 11 millimeter Osnium flush mount LED bolts. Uh, style is aluminum, one watt, red, housing black, no lens. I got these also off of uh, Amazon. This is the hotspot. I ordered a blank one because I was intending to add my own lights. And I would have put that flasher up here, but unfortunately it's a little bit too tall. And I don't want to have to make modifications to the light or to the hotspot to fit it. So I'm going to use these, these little LEDs, and they're actually reasonably bright. I have just kind of set them out. I found the center line more or less on the back, and I've traced them on. And then I'm going to just drill the three holes. Okay, I'm done drilling the holes and installing the lights. I started with a smaller drill bit, a 930 seconds, I think. And then I worked my way up with this bit, which is 13, 13 uh, half inch, maybe? 13, 30 seconds. And then I went to the bigger ones in the back, and it ended up being <clears throat> 11 millimeters, which makes sense because the light is 11 millimeters. And then from there, on the back here, there are two screws, and I just screwed those up nice and tight against it to hold those in place. And then from there, it's time to wire it up. So I've got a temporary wired up here to the power source, 12 volt battery, and this is what the hotspot looks like with the three lights. Not nearly as blindingly bright as the flasher, but this would be something that I think would be a good option during the night, and I will just wire these probably to be solid. And in the front, eventually, I will probably move the IQX headlight and I'm thinking about getting the IQXL headlight which has the uh, the um, <clears throat> high and low beams and it's actually more of a close-up and a distant beam 
but I may end up moving that up to the front so I get a little bit of better lighting up there. And I'll just put the IQX uh, headlight up here purely for visibility purposes. It's just nice to have some lights up high um, so that it's more at the height of drivers. Okay, I have traced the wiring now and the bulk. Thankfully, it's color coded. And I'm getting ready now to do the install. Uh, I need to shorten up these wires because they are tremendously long and all this needs to do is just drop through a hole and then I'll use these uh, Molex connectors that I have left over from uh, when I did some rewiring in the Quest and that way I have the option to take the hot spot off if I uh, determine that I don't know for some reason I need to remove it it just makes things easier so just guesstimating about this much and then we snip. I need to connect all the blacks together and I need to connect all of the reds together. The reds are the power in, the blacks are the uh, common, and in the wiring system all the blacks eventually connect together and then run back into the black wire on the battery. These wires come stuck together, so we need to pull them apart a little bit. And then I'm just finding the right groove in the stripper. Strip off the wires. Pick the wrong one there. Do that six times. We want just enough wire so that we can wrap them around each other. And get a good soldering joint. Okay. So again, all the reds go together and all the blacks will go together. And twist them around each other so they stay together. You can think of the uh, twisting together as them kind of hugging each other. And then on these Molex connectors I have left them connected together because the wires on this other side are not color coded and on this side they are so this wire here is the red and before I put that on I need some shrink wrap tubing I could get a scissors but then you'd have to wait for me to go to the kitchen, which is coincidentally right around the corner. I'm back with my shrink wrap tubing. Cut off a little bit of that. I will slide this on the side and then on this side and then again we see that this side is the red wire so we connect that here and the other side is the black wire and we connect that down on the side with the black wires and then we take a trip to my soldering station here in the kitchen. Okay, so it's the usual soldering procedure. We are going to just 
just paint a little bit of solder on just enough to make sure the wires are secured well together and hopefully won't come apart at any point just tidy that up a little bit and then we'll get a little bit here underneath as well and we do the same on the other one slide the shrink wrap tubing up over top of things there we are and we're going to shrink it down you could also use a heat gun which I have out in the garage Okay, I have found an approximate placement for the hotspot. Uh, nothing scientific. Uh, it's pretty hard to measure anything, but I've just kind of sighted it with where it looks like it's lined up. And I'll drill a couple of holes and get the hotspot on. Okay, next step here is I'm feeding the wires in. And I soldered everything up. And I just noticed that, uh, unfortunately, this is not dead center where the wire is, which is quite annoying. But I'm not going to drill another hole to fix it. It's just going to be that way. But uh, I fed the wires through, and they are already all soldered up so that I don't have to mess with that. This black one's going to run up here to the top of the hood. And uh, I'm running a separate wire for the blinkers, and they're going to go in uh, to the switch, the main switch for the lights, which has a blinker relay built into it, so it can be either solid or blinking, just like the headlight. And then the other one, I'm running a separate switch to the very, very bright rear light, because there will be times, like at night, when I don't want to run that light. And um, in order to get this black wire up into the head bump now. I'm just going to connect it, kind of tape it to the red wire and pull it up through so I don't have to worry about fishing it. So that's the next step and then I can get the hot spot in and then I can start playing with the wiring. I realized the one thing that I failed to do was to show you the actual wiring in the electrical console in the bulk. If you don't know how to read an electrical diagram or you've never done wiring modifications before, I would highly recommend uh, engaging the services of someone, friend, relative, an electrician, uh, before doing any sort of modif modifications to the book, at least to have them kind of walk you through the process of reading the diagram. Because the last thing I want to do is put out a tutorial that causes somebody to go and screw something up with electrical wiring because that can end not very well. But anyway, for those of you that are experienced with wiring, this is what the box looks like. The power comes up into this main switch and it comes in through this wire here, goes through the fuse box, and it comes out here and plugs into here. Then there is a couple of pink wires that come out here, and that's where we're gonna pull the power from. It comes into a pigtail down here. You can see that pink wire from here passing through here up into that pigtail. That's where we can pull this piece of uh, sheathing off. In fact, it looks like I could do a better job of closing that off. But that's where I pulled the power wire here, this one that runs into the middle of the switch. Then this wire brings the power out here. And this is what runs back to the new light in the rear. Um, the other lights I just uh, connected into the lighting switch here. But um, you'll see 
there's a black and a red here together. Those are the two that go back to that light in the back. The black connects up into this pigtail with all of the other common wires. And then the red, I showed you where that came from. All right, so this is the uh, wiring diagram for the book. The switch we're dealing with for adding running lights is this main switch here. And it, um, the wire we're concerned with is this brown one coming out. There's two brown wires. One goes into this uh, control plate, and then the other one goes out here. There's a flasher module involved so that if you push down, it will engage the flasher. And this brown wire has a sort of a pigtail that'll take it back here to the back. And I pulled off back at this point because I didn't want to break into the wiring sheath here, but I pulled off the uh, cover of that joint and I soldered in at that point to run a separate wire back to add the running lights to the hot spot. And here's what that looks like here in the book. There is this wire that I ran back to the back for my hotspot lights. And you can see the brown wires. One of those brown wires runs up into here, into the sheath. And that is going to run up to the front for the headlight. And then the other one comes from the switch itself. And then that that wire there also runs from the switch and I think was originally part of the pigtail here or something. 